So in this video, we're just going to be creating this advanced image slider. Now, what's so advanced about this? Well, as you can see, the focal point, the active card, is the largest card among all of the images here. We can click Next, and it scales and it shifts its Z-index. It's a bit more complicated than the other slider I did. And it scales and it shifts its properties based on its position. Let me, in the uh, in the carousel, let me zoom out a bit so you can see the full width of it. So we're just going to be creating this in this video. So if this interests you at all, stick around. Let's begin. So I have a basic React.js app and running. If you don't know how to do that, I'll have a link in the description below or a card on the top right. So let's start off by creating two components. One's the deck. It's going to hold all of the cards. I'm just going to call mine deck.js. And the next component is just the card component, the deck component, so card.js. The deck component is going to be a class. The card is going to be a function component. So RCE for class, perfect. And we're going to need a constructor we'll deal with in a bit. The card is going to be a functional component, so RFCE. Export default card, and we're going to need the props. Much of the styling of the cards is going to come from the uh, from the deck, the parent component. So props. There we go. All right, let's just style this guy. So let's center the deck in the center of the screen. The const styles is equal to, we'll just say deck. We'll do a position of absolute. We'll do a top of 50% as well as a left of 50%. Let's do a transform so it's truly in the center of the page. So translate, negative 50%, negative 50%. There we go. Let's do a height and a width. We'll just do 300 pixels by 300 pixels. You're not going to see this in the, in the end product, but just to see where these, the deck is stacked. So width, and let's give it a background color. I spell this background color of green. Let's apply the style here. Styles equal to styles dot deck. Let's use the deck in the app right here. Import deck from that would be components slash deck dot js. You don't need the js. I just like to put that. And let's put the deck on the screen. Save. We go back. All right. So that's our deck. Let's create a card and center the card in the middle of the screen. So same thing, const styles is equal to, we'll call this guy card, same thing, position, absolute, we'll do a top of 50% as well as a left. Let's do a transform, translate, negative 50 by negative 50, it should be percent. Let's do a height of, I don't know, say 200 pixels. Let's say a width of 300 pixels. So 300 pixels, and let's give this card a color of, and all these cards are gonna have different colors just so we can properly uh, troubleshoot the program. For now, just do a default color of red. Save, let's apply that to the div here. So style is equal to styles.card. Let's use it in the deck. So we'll do an import of the card and from card.js and we'll use the card right here. Card. Save, go back. All right, so we have one card centered in the middle of the screen. Let's create, well, let's do a loop. I was gonna create cards manually, let's just do a loop. So let's just say when the component mounts, some component did mount, we're gonna do a loop and we'll create some cards and we're gonna save those cards and put the cards on screen. So in a state, we're just gonna have a cards array and just blank for now. Say let new cards equal blank and let's do a loop. So for let i equal to zero, i is less than, let's do nine cards and i plus plus. What we're gonna say is, we're gonna create a new card. So we're just gonna say new cards dot push and into that we're gonna say a new card like this and what should we do let's do it this way let's say color is equal to colors of i let's define that array just say const colors is equal to an array nine colors one color how many colors should we do nine colors colors let's say gray and then let's say yellow 
So those colors will be put into here. Let's use the colors here. So into the styles, we're gonna destructure this uh, this object like this. So dot dot dot. Let's add on some styles. We'll say the background color is ground color is equal to, and it would be props dot color passed in. And let's do this. Let's add a border. So border is equal to two pixels solid black. And we need a box sizing of what would should be it should be border border box boxing size. It's a border box. There we go. So save. We create nine cards. We're passing in colors. We're gonna pass in a whole bunch of data. So let me just do this right now. So we don't clutter the uh, the space. So once we've created all those new cards, we're gonna do this dot set state. And we're going to set the cards to the new cards. And then we shift A, can I do a shift A? There we go. And we use the cards here. Instead of this one card, we're just gonna do this dot state dot cards. Load that up. All right, so we have all the cards here. They're all stacked on top of each other. What we need to do is we need to offset these guys or position these guys. We'll say position, offset comes later. We need to position these cards so that, let me zoom out just a bit. I want to position these cards so they're all lined up like this horizontally. So how should we think about ordering these cards? Currently they're stacked on top of one another. How do we get them to be side by side in sequential order? So if the first card's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, how do we do that? Well, all the math for this tutorial. The program needs to know what the left side of the deck is and what the right side of the deck is. How do we get a program to know that? Well, let's draw it. Let's say we have five cards. So let's say the middle card is the active card, the card the user's focusing on, this one right here. We have two cards to the right, and we have two cards to the left. What indices do these cards have? So this is zero, this is one, two, three, and four. And we have a for loop that creates all of these cards. So I goes from zero to four, or less than five, but let's just say zero to four. So zero, one, and two, three, and four. If I, so the index we're on creating the card, is less than this two here, we know we're working with the left side of the deck. That's left. Now what about the right side of the deck? Well, that would leave that any card to the right of the active card and including the active card are the right side or constitutes the right side of the deck. So in our program, all the cards to the left of the active card are gonna be the left side. All the cards to the right of the active card and including the active card are considered the right. Why do we need to know this? Well, let's do this. Let me clean this up just a bit. Control to Z some stuff. So we need to assign some values to these cards. Specifically, this main active card needs to have a value of zero. And then every other card needs to have a value relative to zero. Specifically, this is one card away or one space away from zero. This is two spaces away from zero. Same thing here, one space away from zero two spaces away from zero. Now, why do we need this? Well, before we get into that, let's construct this. How do we get this pattern of numbers, so these values, two, one, zero, one, two, from a for loop that goes from zero to four? So zero, one, two, three, four. How do we get two, one, zero, one, two, should be a comma there, from zero, one, two, three, four? What if we apply two different algorithms? Simple algorithms, so one calculation. One calculation for the left side, and one calculation for the right side. So on the left side, what if we said two minus i? So the value of each card is two minus i. What is two minus zero? Well, that's two, so two minus zero is equal to two. And then i becomes one, what's two minus one? Well, that's one. So it looks like we have our two, one, two, one. What about the algorithm for the left, or excuse me, the right side. What if we said i minus two is the algorithm for the right side? i is currently two. What is two minus two? Well, that's zero. What is two minus, excuse me, three minus two? Three minus two is one. What is four minus two? Well, that's two. So just like that, we took a number system or some sort of fixed values of zero, one, two, three, four, and applying this algorithm right here, two minus i and i minus two, we get our two, one, zero, one, two. Now, why is this important? Well, when we do things, and we're gonna order the cards in a second, each card is about 300 pixels wide. 
So this is 300. So what if we said, what is 300 times zero? Well, it's zero, so don't move this card anywhere. What is one times 300? Well, that's 300. So move this card 300 pixels to the right. What is two times 300? Well, it's 600. So move this card 300, 300, which is 600 pixels to the right. Same thing for this. This, is this card right here is 300 pixels from center. This card right here is 300, 300, 600 pixels from center. So that's why we need this 2, 1, 0, 1, 2 value system. For the code in the back end, we have nine cards, so it's going to be 4, 3, forgive my writing, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and then back up, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is a very important value system to use because it allows us to perform math to these uh, cards all relative to our active card. So enough talking, let's go into the, uh, the code and actually do this. Okay, so let's start by defining the, uh, the left side and the right side of the deck. So if i is less than the middle card's index, I'm just going to say middle card by index, then we know we're working on the left half. There we go. Else, we're working on the right half. So else, right half. Let me do this. This is right side of deck. This should be the left side of the deck. Left side of deck. Now let's define the middle card by index. What is the middle card? How do we know this? So middle card by index. Well, what's the length of this? Uh, it's kind of messy, but what's the length of these? How many cards are there? There are five cards. What is five? Let's do it in a different color. Let's go red. What is five divided by two? That's 2.5. There's no such index as 2.5. We just need the two. We don't need the 0.5. So if we apply a math.floor function, it'll just give us the integer, the whole number here, two. So that's how we know the, the index of the middle card. So if we say, and we can't actually use uh, the length of the array uh, right now because the array is not created. The array gets created down here, right? So we're going to have to say, we're going to have to hard code it basically. So let's do this. Let's say total cards, number of cards, number of cards. And for this tutorial, we'll use nine cards. So I'm going to say total number of cards divided by two. That gives us an odd number, 4.5. We don't need four, but we just need four. So math.floor gives us the four. So we now know the middle guy. So if i is less than that middle guy, we're going to the left side, else working on the right side. Now to get this, let me just clear all this nonsense. Now to get ordering, let's do this like this. Order the cards. We'll go in steps. So order the cards, order the cards. We have five cards on screen. The black pen out, there we go. We have five cards to the right, to the left. How do we know what's the formula for calculating the distance? Well, zero is here, right? This is 300 pixels. This is 300, 300, so 300 times two. Let's write that a bit better, 300 times two. So it's just gonna be some sort of center value. In, case this, in this case, it's zero, just for this picture. And to move left, we need a minus 300 times the value calculated here. So this is one, this is two. So this is one, excuse me, this is one, or it's either two. And remember we said it's two minus i. So this is actually 300 times two, or the middle card by index, minus the i. So we'll do it in two separate new variables. So new x is equal to zero. Let's say new y is also equal to zero. And we're moving from the center in terms of pixels of this uh, of this deck. We need to calculate the center of this uh, of the deck here. And all that is is half the width and half the height, and that'll give you the center part right here. So let's do that here. Let's go let center equal. The x value is just going to be half the... And it's a string, so we need to parse into a float because we want to do math with it. Parse float. It's going to be this dot deck. Did we define the deck yet? We did not. So under dev, we need a reference to this so we can get some values from it. So ref id arrow function this dot deck is equal to that ref id. So up here we can just say the x value of the center is equal to this dot deck dot style dot width and divide that by two. And the y is just the height divided by two. There we go. So to order the cards, the new x is going to be equal to the center dot x. And this is the left half of the deck. So we're going to subtract 300 
times that value system, that algorithm, that 2 minus i. So middle card by index minus i. There we go. And the y is just constant. We're not changing it. We're just going to be explicit about it. So let's just send it out y. And for the right side, we just need to reverse the plus, or excuse me, the minus with a plus. And the algorithm wasn't 2 minus i. It was i minus 2, or i minus that middle card by index. There we go. We need to push it into the card right here. Let's just say x is equal to new x. New x. Let's say y is equal to new y. We have to use that in the data here. Let's properly space this. It's going to get hairy. Background color. Perfect. And so we need to override the top and the left. Left is the x value and it needs to be a pixel value. So pixel. And the top is also a pixel value. There we go. And the x is the left, so prop.x or props.x. And the y is props.y. Save. We go back. And so just like that, we've used that little algorithm to order the cards from left to right. This is the center card, the active card. And all of these go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But the values, according to the algorithm, are 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. One, two, three, four. Now we need to offset or cascade the cards. And so what I mean by that, currently all the cards are side by side, so let's draw it. So currently we have the cards side by side, so this is 300 pixels wide, 300. The next card is 300 pixels wide, and the next card is 300. Same thing here, same thing here, 300, 300. What we need to do is we need to kind of cascade or shuffle the cards into one another. So we have this right here. We have 300 for the main card, and the next card will be, we'll do it by a third. So we'll see 200 pixels of the next card. The rest of the card is underneath this card here. For this card right here, we have 200 pixels that you can see, and 100 is shuffled under this card right here. So we're just going to shuffle them to create this, uh, this cascading effect. Now what does that look like? Well, we're shuffling these in by, uh, we'll just say a third. You can tweak this value if you want. For this tutorial, we're going to do a third. So by a third of what? One third of the width of a card. And the width we've determined is 300. So this first card here, right here, so this is value 0, 1, 2, 1, 2. This first card right here is one third into its previous card. So that's a third of the card right here times 1. This guy is one third over to compensate for this. So let's say this was the middle card and this was 200. 300. If we don't move this guy right here, he'll be right here. So we need him to move one third of 300 and then another third of 300. So his would be 1 over 3 times 300. 300. 0. There we go. Times 2. So we just need this little algorithm here. We need one third of a card. So one third, one third times 300 times the middle card, it's that little algorithm we had. So for the left side, it would be times 2 minus i. For the right side, it would be i minus 2. Let's go to the code and actually do this. Let's go to the deck here. And we just ordered the cards. Let's cascade or offset. Yeah, we'll just say cascade the cards. So let's do a new... Actually, we don't need to do a new variable. It's a... It's going to add on or subtract from the x we calculated here. So we're just going to say new x is equal to the new x. And we want to move on the left side, we want to move the cards to the right. So this time it's going to be a plus, not a minus. Plus, and let's say one third of a card. So 0 0.333 times 300 is the width of a card. And times our middle card by index minus i, because we're working on the left side of the deck. The y we don't need to touch. So Let's copy these two lines, paste them down here, nope, there we go, and we're working on the right side, we want to move left, so we need a minus, minus, there we go, we can save, we go back, and we forgot to change the, uh, the counter thing here, it's not the 2 minus i, it's the i minus 2, or the i minus the middle card by index, save, we go back, there we go. So we have all the, the cards cascading over one another, kind of. It kind of looks loopy because we have to fix the Z index, which we'll do in a second. But currently, all you see right here, what we should see is 
300 pixels for the main card and all these guys are shifted over so you're seeing 200 pixels here 200 pixels here and 200 pixels here once we fix the z axis which we'll do in a moment okay so how do we fix the z indices of these cards so they're properly over overlapping one another uh, if you don't know what z index is it's just a value that conveys a 3d space so in your css Let's say you have two elements on screen, a black element and a red element like this. Let's say the red element had a Z index of five, the black one had a Z index of two, the five is greater than two, so the red element would be overlapping the black element. That's all the Z indexes. So how do we get our proper uh, Z indexes or indices for these cards? Can I clear this canvas? So just do a five card setup. Let's do a middle card right here, the active card. Two cards on the right, two cards on the left. What should be the Z index values of these guys? Well, we need this middle card to have the, the highest Z index. Let's just say it's 100. And then we need these guys to be less than 100 because they're being overlapped by the middle guy right here. So let's just say this is two. And this is two right here. And then we need these outer guys to be less than the two. So let's say this is one. So how do we get our values to be not exactly these numbers, but the highest number here? and then a second highest, and then the lowest here, second highest and lowest here. Well, we have a for loop that goes from, for the cards on screen, it's just zero to four. For the cards in the back end, it's zero to eight. This is just zero to four. So zero, let's do it right here. Zero, one, two, three, four. What we said for the left side right here, the Z index is just the I or the counter in the for loop. So this guy would have the Z index of zero. This guy would have the Z index of one. One is greater than zero, so the two would overlap the second card, would overlap the first card, which is what we want. What about for the right side? And in this case, the right side is not including the special case right here. What if this just this right side here? Well, we'd have a three and a four. So this guy would be Z index of three. This would be four. Three is not greater than four. Four is greater than three. So this card right here would overlap this card. This is not what we want. So what if we just take the left, or excuse me, the right side values and multiply them by negative one? Well, then you get negative three and negative four. And negative three is greater, let me do a different color here. Let's do green. Negative three is greater than negative four. So this card would properly overlap this card right here. In the special case, we can just code for it. We'll just give it a, a Z index of 100. So let's go to the code and actually do this. So we've ordered the cards right here. We've cascaded the cards. Let's do a new Z index value. So let's do new Z index equals zero. Yeah, I'll put it down here. Let's say Z index the cards. Z index the cards. There we go. So for the left side, we're just gonna say the new Z index is equal to I. So don't change it, just I. For the right side right here, we're gonna say it's i times the negative one value. And for the middle, which is our special case, what's this part here? I copied this part, where did this part come from? For the middle part, we can just code it down here, the special case. So we're just gonna pass it in as z index is equal to, and we're gonna say if i is equal to, so if the counter is equal to the middle index card, so equal to middle, card by index, we want the Z index to be equal to, we'll just say 100. Else, it's just equal to our new Z index. Save, let's go back to the cards to actually use it. And so we'll just add it on here, Z index, and it should be props dot, I think it was Z underscore index, I called it. Save, we go back, all right, perfect. So that's what it looks like. The center card is overlapping all the other cards and all of the other cards are overlapping their subsequent or their proper, uh, their, you could say this one would be the next cards and this one would be the previous cards. So let's uh, scale the cards now. So we've ordered them, we've cascaded them, we've shifted their Z indices. Let's scale them. So the, the center card is the largest one and then the orange right here would be the second largest, the purple would be second largest, and the pink, and then it just scale down to create that nice effect. How do we do that? Let's go to the whiteboard. So let's say we had the five card set up again. So middle card, two cards on the right, two cards on the left. Let's just say we'll do a 95%. You can tweak this value if you want. So this card right here 
should be 95%. Let's do it like this. 95% of the middle card. This is a scale of one, so we don't touch it. 95% of the main card one. This guy here should be 95% of this guy right here. So this is 95% twice, but not really twice. It's not 95% times two. It's actually 95% times or of 95%, which is the same as 95%. Let's write it properly here. 95% to the power of two. So in our code for the, when we shifted them in terms of order, it was 300 times that little thing. Like on the left side, it'd be two minus I. In our case here, it's going to be 95% to the power of two minus I. Let's go to the code and actually do this. Let's create a new scale. Let's do it right here. Let new scale equal. We'll just start at zero. It doesn't really matter. So we order the cards, cascade the cards, Z index the cards, scale the cards, scale the cards. There we go. So new scale is going to be equal to, we're going to use a math.pow function, so a base of 95%, so 0 0.95 to the power of our little middle card by index minus i. We'll copy this, go down here, paste it here. And for this guy, same thing, but it's reversed. So i minus middle card by index. Let's add it to the uh, add it to the card down here. So scale is equal to and that would be the new scale. Let's go to the card and actually use this. All right, so this is in the transform property, and we need to scale like this. Can I click off that? Perfect. We need to scale like this. So scale of, and it would be props.scale. Now, if we hit the transform like this, we're losing this translate, and so the, the whole thing's going to go off. So we need to keep this translate. So we need to bake it in right here. So translate. Translate, negative 50%, negative 50%, plus the scale. We save, we go back, and there we go. Oh, the card, let me do it more, a bit more drastic so you can see it. Let's do a scale of 80%. We're going to put it back up to uh, to 95 but just so you can see the what we're doing here. 80, save, save. So that's what the scale looks like. This is uh, not touched, so it's a scale of 95% to the power of zero, which is one, so one scale. And this is 80% of this one. This is 80% of this, 80% of this. And this is 80% of this, 80% of this, 80% of this, and, then, and so on and so forth. So we've probably scaled the cards. Let's bump that back up to 95. 95, and where is the next one? 95. Save, we go back. Okay. All right, so let's get some functionality in this guy. We have it all visually set up. Let's get some uh, some next and previous action going. So let's go into the code, and we need two buttons, a next and previous button. So let's just do this button on click, and we'll code for the uh, the next button, and then we'll just copy and paste the code because the previous button's code is just the, the mirror opposite in terms of logic of the next button. So on click, this dot handle next, and this is the next button. There we go. Copy paste. This is the handle previous. There we go. Previous, and that should be previous as well. And all this needs to be wrapped in a div because of the way React JS works. Format save. Go back. All right, we have a handle. We have a previous and next, and let's code for the functions. The handle, uh, handle next and handle previous. So handle next, arrow function. Let's do handle previous narrow function. All right, so what do we need to do? What does the logic look like for handle next and handle previous? Let's set up the uh, the five card deck. Let's do here. It's the main card. Now we have them offset and cascaded properly. So this would be the second card here, the third card here, scaled properly. This would be first or second card here, first card here, whatever. All right. So all these cards have properties associated with them, properties that we defined. They have a left value or a left property. They have a Z index property. 
and they have a scale property. When we click next, we want all the cards to shift to the left so this guy becomes the dominant card. But what does that look like in terms of these properties? Well, let's do this. This is index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the name of the game is when we shift left, we want the third card here, or the third index, to become this card, where the second index is. So all that means is, all the properties of this card need to become the properties of this card. All the properties of this card need to become the properties of this card. So when you click next, what we're really saying is, let's say, let's take the three for example. So if our, our loop, only for loop, i is equal to three, what we want to say is the card that has the index of 3, so card 3, we want your values, so your, your left, your index, your, your scale, to be equal to the properties or the values of the card 3 minus 1. If your card, let's say 4, we want your properties to be equal to all the properties of the card 4 minus 1. So it's this minus 1 thing. So if we're going next, whatever card we're on, take the properties of the previous guy. If we're going previous, take the properties, let's say we're on card 1, or this index 1, take the properties of the next guy. So that would be the plus 1. We're going next, so we're going to do the next one. When we do the previous, we'll switch the code to the negative, or excuse me, the positive one. So let's go to the code and actually do this. So we have a for loop. So we say for i is equal to, and we're going to start from the end here. We're not going to start from the zero card. We're going to start from the end, and we're actually going to leave the zero card out for a special case, which you'll see in a second. So we're going to start at the end. So that would be this dot deck dot children dot length, and that should be negative one to start by the index. I has to be greater than zero, so do not touch this special case card right here. And we'll say i minus minus. There we go. And all we're going to say is this dot deck dot children of the i, let's say dot style dot left is equal to this dot deck dot children of i minus one dot style dot left. Take on the properties of the guy previous to you. So left, this should be z index, this should be z index as well. And the scale is in the transform. And this i is getting redlined because we need to let i. And this should be transform. And this should also be transform. Let's save. Let's go into our little uh, setup here. Click next. And there we go. Now it's transferring instantly because we don't have a sort of transition duration. Let's fix that. Let's go here and let's just say copy, paste. I style dot and it should be transition duration is equal to let's do one second save go back here click next there we go so you see how all these guys so this gray one's going to move where the pink one is which is the active card so his, his scale right here should be bumped up to one his left should be this coordinate X and Y right here, and his Z index should be overlapping every other one. So I click next, and the gray guy becomes the active card. Now what about that, uh, that special case? Well, when we click next, uh, we want this red card to go where the yellow card is. Currently, so let's say we click next, the orange guy takes the white guy's card, the white guy takes the purple guy's card. There's no previous right here uh, in front of the red guy. So we need to save the values of the yellow so that when we click next, we can say red guy, take the values of the yellow guy. Now we need to save these values, it's a special case because we're looping from the, the end to the beginning. So by the time we hit the red card here, if we say, hey, red guy, take the value of the yellow guy's card, the yellow guy might be right here somewhere. And so the red guy would pop right here. We need to save this yellow guy's properties before we even move. So let's go to the, the, uh, the code and do that. So we'll save it right here. Let's just say, let, and it's the last card's properties we're, we're, uh, we're saving. So say let last cards left equal this.deck.children and the last card is this.deck.children dot length minus one and we want to save the style dot left. We'll copy paste paste and let's save the z index and the transform as well. So z index and this should be Z index as well, 
and this guy should be the transform and this guy should be transform as well all right so after you're done shuffling all the cards to the left let's take care of that special case let's do special eci ecil special case and let's just do yeah we'll copy this paste it here actually the whole thing we need duration as well copy these paste them here so the first card so this should be zero 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 your transition duration let's say one we're going to change it in a second but you'll see what happens here so it's left should be equal to that last card's left that we saved it's z index should be the last card z index that we saved semicolon there we go and of course the transform last card's transform that we saved let's save let's go into the code and see what happens so i click next and the red guy goes over there now uh, we can see it transitioning and sliding behind the cards. We don't want this behavior. We want to kind of make it pop out or, or kind of shrink out or shrink in and then pop back out or pop back in on the right side instead of it us seeing it slide over like that. So how are we going to do that? Let's do this. Let's make it a bit quicker. Let's do 0 0.2. See what that looks like. Next. There we go. We want to fade it or, excuse me, uh, kind of shrink it that back down to 0. So what we're going to say is, instead of doing all of these uh, these transformations right off the bat when we click next, let's shrink the card down to zero. So let's just do uh, copy paste, and we're going to say style transform is equal to, and we'll keep the translate fifty fifty negative fifty percent negative fifty percent. This time we'll just do a scale of zero. You'll see what that looks like. Let's comment these guys out. Save, go back, click next, shrinks out. We want to shrink it back in over here. But we want to shrink it back in once these cards have shifted to the left. That takes about one second. We'll wait like 700 milliseconds. You can tweak the timing if you want. So what we're going to say is take all of the cards except the special case, shift them to the left. So take the, uh, the properties of the guy before you. We're going to shrink that special case down to zero. We're going to wait that timeout. So we're going to do a set timeout of let's say 700 milliseconds not 800 700 and then we'll do all this business here there we go uncomment this save we go back press next we should shrink out there we go and why are we getting this stuff here why is it not popping back in why are we seeing this shift well we want to we're waiting 700 seconds for this guy to play out we want to go instantly to the left and instantly to the Z index. So let's do this. Transition duration, zero. So take all the cards except the special card, shift them. Special card, shrink down, wait 700 milliseconds, then switch our transition duration to zero. Instantly take on the left guy's attribute so we shouldn't see any sort of slide to the left, or in this case to the right. Instantly take on the Z index and instantly take on the transform. Let's save. Let's go back, click next, shrink out, and why are we popping in like that? So you notice we shrink out right here, we want to shrink back in. So in this transform here, there is a scale of the last guy, so 0 0.95 times 1, 2, 3, so 0 0.95 to the power of 3. We want to shrink back up to that scale, just like we shrunk back or shrunk down to 0, we want to shrink back up to that 0 0.95 to the power of 3. So we'll copy this, we'll paste that here, and we'll do the same amount, so 0 0.2 seconds. We save, we go back, let's click next. So we shrink out, we should shrink back in. Click next, and we're seeing the slide left. What's going on here? Well, just because we write a transition duration of zero doesn't mean these, uh, these lines execute in zero seconds. They still take time, so it's not zero seconds. So by the time these two guys run, they're way over 0, 0.0 seconds. So we actually want to wait for these two lines of code to run. We want to wait for it to take on the left, take on the Z index, and then take on these transforms. So we'll do another timeout. Let me do a semicolon here. Another timeout. And let's just wait 100 milliseconds. Let's do this. We'll wait 100, and then we'll do our transform, or scale back in. And then we should have it popping out and then popping back in. So save. Click next. Should be shrinking to zero and shrink back up to whatever that scale is. 
There we go. Click F5. Next again. Perfect. Let's click next one more time. See what happens. Next one more time. See what happens. Next one more time. See what happens. Now, why is it doing this? Well, visually, this first card goes where the last card is. But pay attention to this. Let's do this. Let's control L. Each key, unique prop. We don't really need to do that for this. All right. So let me inspect this element. There we go. Yeah, so this red guy is the first child of this uh, of this deck of cards. Watch what happens when I click next. So I click next. Visually, the red guy goes to the end. But where's the red guy in the actual code? Well, he's still at the at the beginning or the first child. We need to change this. Once we change it visually, we need to change it on the back end as well. So we need to put the red guy in the code down here at the end. So we'll go into the code here, and what we're going to say is. Take all the cards, shift them to the left, special case, shrink down to zero, wait a bit, take on the left and the Z index, wait a bit, do your transform, we'll do it right here. What we're gonna say is this dot deck dot, and it should be append child. Let's see if that works, append child. I wanna append the first guy to the end of the deck. So this dot deck dot children of zero. We'll save, we go back, I click next, all right, what happened? Well, after we took on the left and the Z index, we moved, we literally in the back end on the, on the actual code, we moved the red guy to the end. So the red guy is no longer at index zero. The red guy is at index, the length of the array minus one. So we need to change these guys right here. This.deck.children.length minus one. And this.deck dot children dot length minus one save go back let me zoom in a bit there we go ah, zoom out a bit there we go let's click next good click next one more time good click next good click next and watch what happens when I spam the next button next 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 we need to prevent them from doing this so what we're gonna say is I'm going to say this. Let's create a separate variable for this. We don't need it in the state. If you want to put it in the state, you can. If you want to manipulate it some other way, I'm just going to say this dot animation in underscore not plus in progress. And we'll just set it to false for now. So once they hit the handle next, we want to say this dot animation in progress is equal to true. But we only want to run this stuff if the animation in progress is equal to false, if there's no animation in progress. So if this.animation in progress, so if there's no animation in progress, exclamation mark, then you can move all the stuff. You can do all this stuff here. Else, you're just going to return nothing. So paste, let's go back here, do some proper formatting. Else, right here. Else, just return. So save. Go back, I'm gonna spam the next button, see what happens. Next, 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 next. And we forgot to set it to true here. So we set it, excuse me, the false. We set it to true here. Once we're doing all the uh, the complete animation, we need to say this dot animation in progress is equal to false. And that should work. Spam the next button. Next, 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 next. All right, so I can't spam the button. So that prevents it from doing that. All right, so that's the next button functionality. Let's just take that, copy, paste to the previous, reverse the logic, and we should be good to go. So let's go back here. So same thing, just animation in progress, all of this stuff here. Yank this, put it in the previous. There we go. Let's do some proper formatting. Let's go line by line. Animation progress, we're not saving the last card this time. When we click previous, we want the, the last card to be in the first card's position. So we need to save the properties of the first card. So let's do this. First, this should be first. Zero, all right. And now we're gonna start at the, the actual beginning of the array, not the end. So this loop, need, loop needs to uh, change. So I starts at zero. And we don't want to include the last card, the special case. So it's going to be the length minus one. So i is less than this dot deck dot children dot length minus one. And we're moving up. So i plus plus, 
and we want to take on when we say previous it sh everything should shift to the right so this the white card here should take on the properties of the next guy so it's not i minus one it's i plus one And we're not appending the the first card to the last spot. We're taking the uh, the last card and inserting it before the first card. So we need to do so this. We need to do this dot deck. Let's insert before. And so this is the new card, which was the last card. So this dot deck and dot children should be an R. Perfect. This dot deck dot children dot length. Minus one, and we want to insert it before the first card. So this dot deck dot children of zero. And so we shift it in the actual code, and so there's no actual. Uh, it's changed. It's no longer at the end. It's at the beginning. So this stuff needs to go back to zero. It should be zero, and it should also be zero. And this is not last cards transform. It's the first cards transform. First save animation in progress. Perfect save go back click previous previous and property style of undefined I missed something line 133 yeah the first cards left style dot left length of children minus one am I what am I doing here style dot left and there spelling error save go back hit previous Previous and same thing, 134. I spelled it wrong here. There we go, TH. Go back, previous. There we go, previous, 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 previous. Let's go next, next. And that's the functionality of this uh, this carousel. I'm going to clean this up and I'll show you guys the end product. All right, so I've gone ahead and just inserted some images into the, uh, the div. I'll show you the code in a second. But this is the final product. I've changed the scaling from that 95% to a 90% just to make it a bit more pronounced. We click the next, and we get this effect here. And the reason we're getting these scroll bars on the, uh, on the, uh, on the horizontal, that popping effect, is we needed to do this. Let's go into my index.css, turn the overflow to hidden. Let's go back. There we go. Let's click next. There we go. So that's the end product. Next, 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 spamming next. We can't spam the next. Let's go previous, 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 previous. Let me zoom out so you guys can see the full width of the carousel, the slider. Next, 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 previous. All right, so let me show you the code. So all I did was from that deck, when we create the cards, I created a separate uh, prop called the Pixum image. It's uh, like a lorem ipsum, so random images. I just did a little calculation here to kind of if you just do all the cards 300 by 200, which is the dimensions of our card, it's going to give you the same picture. So I had to modify them by just adding 20 pixels, so it gives us a different picture. We use the picture on the card component right here. So just an image, regular image tag, React.js component, and the source is just the props.pixum image, and the CSS for that is just a width, a height of 100, and a box shadow of black. And of course I changed the scaling from here it was from 95 percent now it's just 90 percent again just an end product that looks like this so if this helped you at all don't forget to give a like subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and i will see you guys in the next one and i almost forgot guys what makes this unique in terms of react.js is the way react.js handles uh, rendering components so let's go into the code here so all of these cards right now are inside a parent called the deck the deck wherever you put this in your code, is going to be inside the parent of another element. The way React.js works is, if the parent element re-renders, all of the children re-render as well. This is not really efficient, because if the information in these cards, it doesn't have to be an image, it could be data, right? If the information doesn't change on these cards, and the parent re-renders, there's no point in re-rendering every single little image. This wastes resources. So we're just going to memoize the cards. And so what memoize says is, if the properties of, or the values, of your little component doesn't change and the parent re-renders. There's no reason to re-render the, uh, the component, just show the old component. So let's go into the code and it's a simple little thing right here. Export default, instead of just the card, we're gonna say export default, it should be react, react.memo and just put in the card right there. 
that's just a way to create more efficient code. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one.